Hey everyone, um, I wanted to make some interesting video tutorial. Um, that's probably not going to be that someone will be using every day, but I wanted to show you how to control a magic queue from external applications that actually don't don't speak Artnet or don't send DMX or MIDI. That could be anything like the um, an installation system in the say in a conference hall in a hotel that can't send uh, say MIDI DMX or Artnet signal, but it can send the TCP signal. I mean the it's TCP IP or UDP protocol is basically internet based protocol that can send the data uh, data packages across the network and basically campuses can understand the magic you can understand them and it can trigger cues trigger playback set the channels you can actually control the whole your rig just from those commands not having like a full uh, remote system set up anywhere like if you don't have a, a phone with a remote app there is no really wi-fi but there is uh, a cat5 cable you can actually control it from external applications again that's not going to be that you will be using every day but for some applications for the people who actually deal with the installations and or deal with anything like some some interesting projects where the other system does not uh doesn't speak the language that the lighting consoles understand so i'm talking about sending a data packages a commands across the internet protocol tcp ip or udp okay so first of all what we need is um, we need to make sure that our magic is activated or out of the demo mode this is really important what it means is like in my case i'm running uh, magic on my pc that does it's not in a demo mode because i'm running it with the dongle uh the um, just just to clarify it's a rack mount dongle that activates the software so or you can have anything from uh twin dmx uh between dual DMX box, uh, interface box, uh, mini wings, PC wings, extra wing, uh, like all, all uh, obsolete, now, now it's like discontinued audio interface. The one that, so anything that unlocks the MagicU software will allow you to, set, to send the signal and receive it into the MagicU. So to do that, so I'm using my Windows PC that's going to be running uh, MagicU. And that magic use connected to my Mac that is here. So that's running my magic Viz, a visualizer. It's also running a free app that I'm using to actually send at uh, UDP uh, uh, packages. So it's called Packet Sender. It's actually free or you can donate some money for the creator of the system. So it is on this website. It's called PacketSender.com. It's quite simple. You go there and you can say download. You can say you can specify uh, if you want to say thank you to the uh, creator, to the author of the program. You can say donate, say five pounds, or just say no thanks. Just let me download. So you can download uh, uh, a Linux version, a Windows version, or a Mac version. So in my case, I'm using Mac. So again, the packet uh, packetsender.com, and you can download the software. It's quite simple to use and it's free so it's quite nice um, okay so then what I do have as well is I've connected both of my laptops through the cross uh, cross in, uh, Ethernet cable that means two of my computers can talk to each other I've set the IP addresses on my both computers to be compatible so like for example on my Mac I've got um, if you go to the network preference you can see that uh, my my MAC address is 200100 and the subnet mask is 255000. So uh, on my laptop, on my PC, I've set the subnet mask to be 255000 and IP address is 200110. So cool. Um, so I've connected them so they can talk to each other, they see each other. I can test the connection uh, on my, uh, that my actual, my Magic UPC can talk to the visualizer so if i raise my uh, first playback on my magic upc you can see it's working okay 
So uh, let me show you then all the settings that you need to set on your Magic UPC. But again, uh, the way it's actually set is quite simple. It's very straightforward and it's really well written in the manual, in the, in the Magic U manual. So if you open the Magic U manual, the PDF file, and if you type here in a search bar a UDP, it will actually bring you uh, um, it's, it will bring you the chapter 33, and that actually tells you all step by step instructions how to set your settings. And I will show you now myself. But again, don't despair if you don't have access to say YouTube and watch this video. Uh, you always can look in the manual, and it actually clearly says what it, what, how to do it. So I've learned these things myself without any ex extra help. So basically, um, what we'll need to do is, um, I'll just set the chapter 32. That's got my commands that we'll be using in a minute. So now let's go back to the PC. Okay, on the PC side, you need to go to the setup window. In the setup window, you go to the network. In a network, you set your IP address. It's like 200110. So double click, and this is my address. So I've set it all correct. The subnet mask is 255000, same as on Mac. Then one of the things you need to switch on is this. It's called Ethernet Remote Protocol. You double click on this, and you have options. So the one that you need is it called rx no header so if you select if you want to receive only uh, commands you you have to select this option if you want to only send uh, tcp commands because magic you can send tcp commands for the external applications or external devices that only understand tcp ip then you can use this or if you want to have it bi-directional then you can switch on tx and rx no header in our case i'll just switch on Campus remote RX no header. So after you do this, you also look at the next port. It says playback sync port 6553. So we will need it on the Mac side when we will be sending the signal. But again, if this port for some particular reason is in use or blocked and you have to use another port, all you do is you double click and you type any new port number. That's simple. So, and also, as I've read, as I learned from the manual, in order to make sure that this function actually works, you need to make sure that when you go to the multi-console mode, you have to make sure that the first options are set yes, so enable remote control, enable remote access, yes, yes, but in the next option, the next set of options is really important. You need to make sure your net session mode is switched off. So that means if you're running it in the, as, as I understood from the manual, if you're running in a multi-console mode, means you have a several systems working together, you will not be able to use the TCP IP mode because it's basically TCP IP mode and the consoles, they use the same uh, the same line across all the fix, uh, all the consoles. That means you have to either use TCP IP or use the network session mode. So in order to make sure it all works, you need to make sure that you've set net session mode to none and the net session ID to zero. Also make sure that the playback sync mode uh, set as PB sync. So it's a basic one. That's a normal standard one, this option. And the programmer sync mode says no sync. Basically, there's uh, anything that's related to the multi-console sync mode should be non or switched off. Only the enable remote access and enable remote control should be kept on. That's pretty much it on the window side, on the, on the uh, Magic U side. So now what we have to do is, now we go back to the Mac side. So on the Mac side, you when you run the packet sender, what you have to do is you have to type in the IP address of the laptop that's running MagicQ. So it's in our case is 200110. That's the IP address. And the port, the one that I showed you in the, uh, in the MagicQ, was 6553. So now all we have to do is following. We set the command, uh, the protocol we're going to send is the UDP. And in the ASCII, uh, representation the in the ASCII uh, 
window, we type in the commands. And you may ask the question, what commands we need to type in? And that's quite simple. So if you go to the MagicQ uh, manual, again, some people hate to look at this, but this is actually quite cool and it shows a lot of things. So basically, it shows you here what commands it understands. So for example, if I want to activate the playback number one, see, activate playback, it says number of the playback, playback number, and A. So all I do is if I want to activate the playback number one, I press, so you have to type one A, press enter, so it creates the hex number, and after that you press send, and you're going to see on your windows that your Q has been activated, but there is no level that's set. So the fader will not go automatically up. So you can see it's red, that means it's activated. It says active, but there is no dimming switched on. So on the Mac side, we need to look at another command. So the command I'm looking for, it's called um, set playback level. So you can see it says playback number, comma, level, and L. So I have to say one, comma, 100 L, press enter, so it generates the hex code, and I press send. Bop. And you can see that the level of my playback number one has been set as 100. So now if I want to release that playback, again, I'm, I'm referring to my playback, uh, to my manual, it says release playback is R, and I say one R, enter, so it make the hex code and press. I switched it off. So now let's try something more interesting. Let's say I on my on my magic queue I have a playback number 10 and the in the playback number 10 is actually a queue stack. So what if I want to activate a, a queue stack? So first of all let's make it let's activate the the level so uh, let's say I virtually raise the fader level to 100 on this queue stack. So I will say 10 is my playback number, that, uh, comma, 100 is my level, and I press L, I press enter. So it generates the hex code, I press send. So it, it actually activates my queue stack nicely with the command. So you can see it says, uh, um, playback number 10, make it at 100 and the press L. So that means it activates for you the playback number 10 at the level 100. It's like it raised the fader. And as it says, uh, the Q stack is made. So as soon as the level raised uh, at 100, let's say the Q stack activates, that's been activated. What if now I want to run, I want to press go for that Q stack? For that, we need to look again at the commands and it says go on playback. It's the playback number and press G. So I press 10, G, enter, and now I press send and it loads uh, my second queue. I can press again and it loads my third queue. So now let, let's say if I want to go to the step number two for this, you can see that it says you jump to queue ID on playback. You have to type in the playback number, comma, queue ID, comma, uh, and then um, and then uh, press J. So what it means is I have to press 10 dash 2 J to jump to the second step. So I press enter to generate the hex code. I press send and it jumps back to the queue number two. Again, that's really cool thing to use if you have an installation, if you have any other software that does not, uh, that cannot send any MIDI commands, but it does know how to send the UDP or TCP commands, this is where this method is going to be useful. Again, you can actually, using this TCP IP commands, you can actually set, for example, change the page. So if I type 2P, enter, and I press send, you will see that the cha page changed. We can back, back, uh, press back, 1P, change back to the page number one. I can also control, so if you go on the system here, you can actually control also the channel levels. So if you want to set an intensity on your park and channel number five, what you'll have to do is you'll have to type five, 
comma 100 and press say 5 comma 100 and press i which means it's the activate channel number 5 at level 100 and i means for intensity and you press send you will be able to switch on the lights as you can see it's really really cool and especially uh you you may use it when the, the system is far away you need to control it from somewhere where you don't have a wi-fi signal and only thing you have is you have a computer then you will be able to do this or you have the, another again uh another device or any uh, anything else that can send um tcp ip or udp channels then you can use this system uh, for your control i hope it was useful again that's not going to be probably used every day by all of you but for some of you that deals with installations and stuff that might be useful again thank you very much for your time i hope it was uh, i hope it was interesting thank you and bye bye